Hi, Thomas here. I want to make a short video to talk about some Logic Pro news that's coming up because there's a new Logic update schedule for January 28th and a lot of people are starting to see posts, videos and articles about it already. If you're learning Logic Pro or following one of my courses, this video is just to give you some calm context about what this update actually means and whether there's anything you need to worry about. Just to be clear, I haven't actually used a new version yet because it's not out at the time of recording this. What I'm sharing here is based on Apple's official article and some coverage that's already online. I've linked to the Apple article in the description so you can read everything directly from the source if you want. One thing worth pointing out straight away is that Apple are not actually calling this Logic Pro 12 on their website. They're simply calling it Logic Pro, which already tells us a lot about how Apple sees this update. They're treating it as an evolution of the existing app rather than a big reset. They've also refreshed the Logic icon, which is something we've had for a long time. But again, this is more of a visual update rather than a sign that the core software has changed completely. The most important thing I want to say first is this. This is an update, not a complete redesign. The core Logic Pro workflow stays the same, recording audio, working with MIDI, editing regions, using plugins, arranging, mixing, and finishing tracks all work in the same way. So if you're following along with one of my courses in Logic Pro 10, Logic Pro 11, or the new version of Logic Pro, you can still follow along without any problems. Your projects will still open and the skills you're learning will still apply. Whether a new version or update comes out, I often see people worry that the course is suddenly outdated, they need to relearn everything from scratch, but that's not how Logic updates usually work. Apple tends to add features on top of existing workflows rather than changing the fundamentals, and from everything that's been shared so far, that seems to be the case here as well. There are some new creative tools being added, but they don't take away from what you already know. Some of the main new features Apple have highlighted include a new synth session player, which is designed to generate synth and bass style parts that follow your chords and feel of your track. Similar in idea to the other session players, but focused on synths. There's also a new chord feature, often referred as the Chord AI or Chord Based AI Tools, which act as a music theory assistant by analyzing audio MIDI and identifying or suggesting chord progressions. These tools are designed to help with idea generation and songwriting speed, but they don't change the fundamentals of how Logic works. Alongside this Logic update, Apple's also introducing something called Apple Creative Studio. This is a subscription bundle that brings together several creative apps in one package, including Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, Pixelmator Pro, Motion, Compressor, and Mainstage, along with premium templates and tools and apps like Keynote, Pages, and Numbers. The idea behind Creative Studio is that if you're creating music, video, or other types of content, you can access all of these tools together rather than buying them individually. In terms of pricing, Apple Creative Studio is offering a subscription at around $12.99 USD per month or $129 USD per year, depending on your region. And there's also a one month free trial. There is also a much lower education price as well for students and teachers, which is around $2.99 USD per month or $29.99 USD per year, again, depending on your region. Apple's also confirmed that the individual apps can still be purchased as one of purchases if you prefer not to subscribe. At the time of recording this, I'm not sure yet whether this Logic update will be a free upgrade for people who've previously purchased Logic Pro or whether there will be a paid upgrade involved. Apple hasn't confirmed the details yet, so we'll know for sure once the update is actually released. One other thing to keep in mind is that if you're running an older version of Mac OS, you may need to update your operating system to use the latest version of Logic Pro. I don't know yet what the minimum Mac OS requirement will be for this update, but based on previous releases, Apple usually does encourage moving to a newer OS if you want to access the latest Logic features. From a learning point of view, the important thing is to understand that you don't need to rush into updating anything. Logic Pro may have some new features in this update, but you can still make great music in older versions of Logic Pro, and you don't necessarily need the latest version to keep learning or keep creating. If you're enrolled in one of my Logic Pro courses, everything you're learning is still relevant. Your projects will still work, and you don't suddenly need to subscribe to anything just to continue using Logic Pro. Once the update is out and I've had some time to properly test everything, I'll be adding the main updates and follow-up videos to my complete Logic Pro course, so it stays current and easy to follow. So to summarize, Logic Pro is getting an update with some new creative tools like the Simp Session Play and Chord feature. Apple Creative Studio introduces a new optional subscription for creators, and none of this changes the fundamentals for how Logic works or invalidates what you're already learning. I'll follow up with more detailed videos once the update is actually out and I've spent some time using it properly. That's all, and thanks for watching.